The super child stands apart from the rest of us. Whether it be a highly accomplished ballerina at the age of 14, or a 13-year-old computer genius, super children are somehow different. To some, the secret rests in the deepest recesses of the human brain. Yet there are methods already known which can reshape the minds of children. Where's the bullfrog? Can you touch the bullfrog for mommy? This normal 18-month-old baby has a 10,000-word vocabulary. Is it possible that more such super children can be created? What is a child prodigy? Leslie Ann Copes is just such a genius. In 1979, she was the only pianist to win the prestigious Los Angeles Philharmonic Symphonies for Youth competition. In the little investigation that has been done of a gifted or genius child, there are few indications that genius spawns genius. What then is the determining factor? It seems highly likely that environment may play a key role in the nurturing of the gifted child. Melissa Allen, at 14, is considered by some at the American Ballet Theater to potentially be one of the prima ballerinas in America. The sacrifices have been many. Melissa explains the rigors of her daily schedules. It's uh, really strenuous. Um, I get up in the morning about 6 o'clock get ready for school, go, school starts at 8 o'clock, then I go from there, I eat my lunch and do my homework on the way to ballet, and then um, I take three classes, and then um, I come home about 7.30, I'm home about 8.30. You got a lot of homework there? Yeah, biology and English, a lot in it. You better get started on it then. Yeah, so better get started. Try and keep the boat to rock Despite her harried schedule, Melissa will finish high school a year early. The necessary ingredients to create such a super child are discussed by her teacher, Margaret Graham Hills. I don't like the word genius, but she has something very close to it. Um, genius, in a way, to me, implies something that's um, uh, not as down to earth as the people who really work are. Uh, genius is almost as though it happens to you and you don't have to work for it and Melissa works for it. She's got the body, she's got the brain, and barring accidents and that sort of thing, I think she will go very far. Because of her outstanding potential, Melissa is expected to work with the American Ballet Theater in New York within a year. Time, effort, and talent will determine if she will become a permanent member of the troupe. There's many instances that I feel like I'm a gifted child, and it's not an ego, it's just being proud that you know that you can do something other people can't. The work is worth a thousand times more than it you put out. It gives you a feeling of satisfaction knowing that you've done it. As far as Melissa and Melissa's type are concerned, I think, yes, they would be um, very, very good at anything they set out to do. Uh, the brain um, is essential. If people say, ah, oh, well, you know, she's no good for anything, let her be a ballet dancer. Doesn't work. The brain's got to be absolutely first class. The abilities of Leslie and other such super children have just begun to motivate scientists to investigate the source of their talent. No organism is as mystifying as the human brain. Its complicated methods of relaying messages are beginning to be understood. 
For Leslie to play with her precision, electrochemical impulses must be relayed to her fingers at a speed of 120 miles per second. These impulses probably emanate from this illuminated section. The area that responds to melody and tone may also be more highly developed. This alone, however, does not fully explain her genius capabilities. Perhaps probing even deeper into the interior of the brain will provide the answers. Marilyn Ferguson, editor of Brain Mind Bulletin. The human brain has tremendous capacities which can either unfold or be left sleeping. And we all have the brain that we need right now to learn anything we want to know. Uh, the capacity has always been there. I don't think it's a matter of some sudden evolution that is going to change things. It's just that the tool we've always had is there and we are only recently discovering that it is. Perhaps each of these children possess within his or her brain abilities associated with Da Vinci, Mozart, or Michelangelo. Are we simply wasting our children's minds? Our whole educational system, and in many ways our whole culture, has valued only one half of human intelligence, one aspect of human intelligence. In the current parlance, this is referred to as left brain intelligence which means the left half of the brain tends to specialize in analytical learning into breaking things into their parts. The right hemisphere, on the other hand, tries to see patterns and see things as a whole. And it's more artistic, in a sense more aesthetic, musical, more sexual, more closely related to our dreams, and in many ways a quicker learner. And now what's happening is educators all over the country are, are going to courses called Teaching Both Halves of the Brain, Educating Both Halves of the Brain, and beginning to appreciate the fact that whole brain learning uh, is what really unlocks our hidden, our hidden talents, our hidden genius, and our hidden understanding. One of the few schools to stress nurturing the whole child is the Merman School in Los Angeles. The school is restricted to children of IQs over 140. Nevertheless, they are taught to be well-rounded individuals. Teachers strongly encourage their students to be intimately in touch with the world around them. Discussions range from topics such as the recycling of industrial resources to the preservation of wildlife. Animals, okay, what else? If you had an aluminum recycling center, they would recycle it and melt down the aluminum to make new cans. Also, aluminum is a finite resource of yours. And um, we'll run out someday if we don't recycle it and keep using it. What else, Max? Well, imagine 2,000 years from now, somebody decides to build, to build a garden in his backyard, but his backyard is on top of a former nuclear waste dump. Ah, oh, how can that present a problem? For the eating radioactive food. Right. These students far exceed their peers oh, the in garden. verbal abilities. <laughs> The school's curriculum is explained by Dr. Norman Merman. We feel that our program is important in enabling the bright child to develop a positive self-concept. So often these children are perfectionists and they need the reassurance in a school situation like ours to make mistakes, to learn from their mistakes, and to realize that that is how we grow. They also, we feel, learn that there are other people like themselves with similar interests, with similar enthusiasm for learning, and they are not, in a sense, the loner out in left field. Well, an, an animal that hasn't really changed a lot is the cockroach, which has stayed the same for about three million years. It's sort of gotten its own little niche right there. And the, you know. that brings up the theory of punctuated equilibrium, which states that equilibrium or, um, evolution is not, as some people think, a gradual, continuous change, very slight changes though, but instead it's a million years or a few million years of something staying the same, and then all of a sudden a spurt of change. Consider the bright child in a conventional situation, how he or she feels that they are really uh, number one, so to speak, or top banana, and when they come to us, it sort of takes the hot air out. They really have to produce and think through what they're saying, and this is so often brought about not necessarily by the teacher, but by the other children in the classroom. 
specialized schoolroom programs provide a fertile ground for capable children. Their potential is being carefully nurtured. For them, education is a challenge. Given an opportunity equal to that of the Merman children, some believe children of average intelligence could become gifted. A startling new process used only in Philadelphia provides this child with a 10,000 word vocabulary. Will this program make it possible for every child to be a genius?